Good evening. A poor exchange rate, high inflation. These are signs of a badly managed economy. Yet our colleagues in government claim that the increase in the prices of goods and services is economic sabotage by business people. They first blamed climate change, then blamed COVID-19, blamed some of us for all their failures in managing the economy. That is the reason why under our government, priority number one will be to fix the hemorrhaging economy by restructuring debt. This will stabilize the exchange rate, reduce inflation, and increase economic activity, which will in turn create jobs. This is what economic management means not hallucinations about imaginary sabotage." End of quote. Now on this day in 2021, President Harayinde Hichilema said these words on his Facebook page as an opposition leader. Today, we take a look about what people are saying about the UPND leadership. Now Harry Pemba says, they are not inspiring or giving hope to the people. It's always excuse after excuse. Let them accept responsibility of governance of the country. Not everything PF that, PF this, not at all. Mavuto Banda says UPND's bad policies have led to more hunger in the country. Very sad indeed. Joel Munamueno says, Te fin tu mami. We students with self-catering are struggling. We can't even call our parents from the village to ask for help because it's even worse back there. Blessed Kawe says it's indeed tough when the cost of living is high and income doesn't stretch far enough. We are only living by the grace of God. Richard Nkata says Njala fulu fulu munyu don. Tempo Chisomo says funny how our leaders go into hiding when things are not favoring them. My guest tonight is the acting president of the Republic of Zambia who is also Republican Vice President Her Honor Madam W.K. Mutale Nalumango. Your Honor, good evening and uh, welcome to Costa. Thank you so much for welcoming me into this government house. And um, I did get the memo on social media that you were ready for me. Indeed, I'm equally equal to the task and ready for you. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And indeed, you are welcome. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me to be given an opportunity on your platform to interact with the people of Zambia. But maybe let me start. I know you have quoted many people and many things, except let me start by offering my condolences. Uh, once again, as government, as this is my first really opportunity to have this kind of interaction to the victims and families of uh, you know, the, the, the cholera um, uh, pandemic that we have just experienced. Indeed, condolences to all Zambians as government and as the people of Zambia. We really do regret deaths because no death is supposed to be there for avoidable, you know, sicknesses, the sicknesses that are related to things that we can handle together as society. So I offer my condolences to all of you families that have lost beloved ones through this pandemic or this uh, disease. I also would want just to, although I heard from your quote also on the issue of climate change, let me assure the Zambians that yes, indeed, the drought has very devastating effect. We have seen the crop wilting mm. under the heat of climate change. I hope then uh, the reason you gave us uh, it being an excuse, we hope that you do agree. It's not just an excuse. It mm. is a real issue. The issue of climate change is real. We'll but I will, not, I will not go into mm. any more details, but just to uh, tell Zambians humanly, I like to use that word humanly, mm. because there is a God above who makes the final decisions. Mm. Humanly, we are aware, and indeed we are doing everything possible to ensure that we should not lose life through hunger. We'll, we'll do be, our best. We'll definitely be getting more into detail. Yes, this with, was just with, my opening with remarks. With the issues of that, and once again, I'm glad and grateful that you could welcome us to Government House, but also give us this opportunity to interact with you. Uh, I must share with you, uh, Your Honor, that there's been so much uh, expectance 
to interact with you. And that's why later on to the viewers will be able to interact via phone uh, on top of the hour. But also just to say that we are live on Facebook. It's at Diamond TV Zambia and also on other Facebook pages online. Remember to those as well watching us across the borders, welcome on channel 271 on DSTV and channel 20 on Go TV in Namibia. Uh, commiserations after the loss of President Gengob, as well as to those in Botswana, Malawi, as well as Zimbabwe. This interview live on Diamond TV with me, Costa Mwansa, and her honor, the Vice President of the Republic of the country, Madam Mutale Nalumango. So firstly, you heard those quotes and indeed a few submissions on our online pages. The question, Madam Vice President, are you as leaders in government really living the same reality as described by these people? Like in that court of the UPND, are you also living in hallucinations or in a bubble not to see the suffering of the Zambians? Not at all. I think your, you know, your sightings or quotations that you have used, there are so many that I can't even mm. remember exactly what it was. But I think this government has always taken responsibility for what is going on. But we always put what is going on in context. Because life did not start in 2021, August. Life began before. The economic situation is before. So we will not take it as an excuse. We take responsibility. In taking responsibility, remember there are two responsibilities in a situation. The cause and what you are doing about it. So when we look at the cause of this reality that we are facing of the cost of living and uh, probably the kwacha, you may talk about it if you want, the inflation. Mm. We have to speak always in context. And therefore, you cannot leave out the cause and jump to solutions. Because if you don't know the cause, you can never find a solution to any problem. And therefore, when we refer, somebody says PF this, PF that, when we refer to PF, because that's the foundation, that's what we found. And we are tackling what we found. And there is no way we can avoid talking about PF, not to push what we must do today to them. But we are working on and doing the negatives that were left. That becomes our responsibility. Mm. So I think the biggest discomfort, Madam Vice President, for many Zambians is that we are two and a half years probably into the New Dawn administration. In other democracies, this can be described as a midterm, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, election. The UPND was voted into power on the campaign premise that you knew and the Zambians knew that they were going through bad economic management under the PF. So you promised fiscal and prudent financial management. You promised reduced cost of living. You promised better micro and macroeconomic indicators. So I think what the people are asking you is not wrong, is to keep you accountable two and a half years that have you delivered on this? And allow me uh, just to make comparisons of a few indicators between 2021 and now. Um, inflation, for example, in 2021 was at 22.2%. Mm -hmm. It is now at 13. Inflation, not inflation. 24. I'm quoting the, the central bank. Okay. 20, uh, tw inflation? 22.02%. Tw okay. And now it's at 13.2%. Great. Millimill. <laughs> Uh -huh. was at 123 kwacha per 25 kilogram bag. Mm -hmm. It's now ranging between 231 kwacha to about 320, depending on where you're buying it mm -hmm. from. A 25, li a, a rather a, a 2.5 container lid of cooking oil in 2021 was mm -hmm. at 119 kwacha mm -hmm. and now fetching for around 127 you know, kwacha. Petrol in 2021. 17 kwacha 62 in Gwe, now at 34 kwacha 19. The exchange rate, the kwacha to the dollar, in 2021 at 19 kwacha 29 in Gwe, now as of last week Friday, according to the central bank, at 25.45 kwacha. The monetary policy rate, 10%, now increased to 12.5%. Start to reserve ratio in 2021 at 9%, now up to 26%. Unemployment 
was at 6.2% and now has gone down to 6.1%. So there are a few sticky areas by the Vice President, especially um, on petrol, the start to reserve ratio, the cost of living, that even if you score on inflation, the cost of living is still high. Yeah. Thank you, Costa. You have listed so many things that my head, <laughs> I, I don't know whether I would respond to all of them. What would, one would have thought maybe you would go through in a, a manner that you, there are things that you would want me to speak Maybe to. let's start with, with the issue of, you know, inflation. Yeah. I remember last year uh, during the question time for the vice president in parliament mm -hmm. on the floor when mm -hmm. the opposition were asking you about the high cost of living. Mm -hmm. One of the things you boast of as vice president and as leader of government business is that you are holding inflation. It could mm -hmm. have been worse off it did. Uh, if without the intervention measures. Exactly. But the domestic economy is crying about yes. some of these intervention measures by the vice president. It, it, the, the economy is not crying about the intervention measures. The economy is crying about the general cost of living. I think that is the outcry. It's not the intervention. There is no negative intervention that the, the, you know, the community or the society can cry about. Mm. Indeed, if from what you have read, if I followed you mm. right, you have acknowledged that the inflation has gone down. I think you did acknowledge. You talked of 22 to 13. Yes, in fact, we had gone to single digit, remember, since we came into power. I think what we need to do is to look back. The important part is, are we going towards the right direction? Let us look at the cost of, for example, fuel. Fuel, the cost of fuel will very much be related to something else you may talk about or you even indicated, the issue of the dollar. Because we buy fuel in dollar. As a country, we purchase fuel in dollar. So if our quacha is weak compared to the dollar, that is obvious that uh, the, the fuel will be expensive. Then you say, why is our kwacha weak? Of course we found it weak. You know, I will, I will not shy away to mention the fact that uh, I, I don't know whether you mentioned the dollar issue and kwacha. We, we found, found we, it. Uh, 2021 was uh, at 19.2. No, 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 no. When we came in, remember my president said, as soon as we come in, this is something people would want to mock about that when the president was saying immediately we come in, the dollar, the kwacha will appreciate. And when we came in, we didn't find it at 19, dear. But I'm, we, I'm, we, I'm, I'm quoting I central am, bank figures. Well, I am also quoting what was on the market. Even the central bank will tell you that it was 22 when we came in. 22 kwacha per dollar. And this went down to as low as 15. So, so Madam Vice Within, President. Uh, l l maybe I, I have to bring out what so, I want so, so, to say. So according to central bank figures that we had, yes, from 19.2, it came down to around 16. When you took you, No, no, no. <laughs> you are talking about probably the end of whichever month. I'm talking of August. So you can go back to August. Mm. By September, it had dropped down to 15 plus, 16, mm, mm, that range. Mm. So what is that? In fact, if they tell you, you do your mathematics, you may find that actually from the time we came in, immediately we came in. There was no issue of having traded to bring in the dollar. But just what the president used to talk about, what we talked about in opposition, the confidence that the international community saw brought the goodwill. That goodwill is when people start committing and they are excited to bring investment. It brought down the dollar the, rate. The, the kwacha, you know, appreciated. But, but Madam Vice President... Am I saying anything? No, you, you are, and I'm just making follow-up. <laughs> because I would I'm, want I'm to, just to, making follow to make a point. So, yes, so yeah. wh whether, whether we found the dollar at 19 or 22, mm -hmm. from what you're saying, mm -hmm to 15 point, or let's just agree, you and me on 16, right, then, on 16. Okay. <laughs> we agreed it's an appreciation. Indeed. But I think the business community is concerned about consistency and stability for planning. So, so, so from 16, you'll agree with me that it has unpredictably gone up to almost not so long ago, a few weeks ago, 
to touching 28. Yeah. It's very bad for business planning. So, yeah. so how can you boast that, yes, we found it at 22 because and reduced it in 10 to Because I haven't even finished telling me what I would want to say. Mm -hmm. The point is we are working hard. It's important, yes, that there is a stability in the kwacha. Anybody, whether economist or not, even my kitchen economics will tell you that we need a stable dollar. But how do you destabilize the dollar? That should be the question that you should ask me. Because we find a very volatile situation. How was the situation? You know, the dollar is not abracadabra. It's not by pronouncement. You have to be able to sell something to get the dollar. What have we been selling? We found, in the, uh, we found ourselves, that's why, if you remember, the dollar, that's why maybe we are even arguing at 19 and, and 22 and 24. We can argue that because there was a free fall. Every single day we started seeing that. You know, the, the dollar was getting more and more expensive. The kwacha was just falling. Why? We should ask ourselves. That is the situation we found ourselves in. And if there was no winning, the dollar would have continued because there was nothing else that was going to hold the dollar. Because, one, you have to look at the, where do we get the dollar mainly? Where, is, where do we earn our foreign exchange as a country? Yes, we have dreams. But as at now, from that time up to now, our main foreign exchange earner is copper. And our colleagues mismanage the copper mining. You will realize that the copper, Mopani, Glencoe had left, left them with literally no capital, a very bad arrangement. Where they left, because to them it was not viable, and yet government inherited one close to 1.2, 1.5 billion, they said they had to pay Glencoe. Where from? There is no capital to even mine properly. And you know that there has been the situation for Mopani. What, what were they thinking about? Where was the money in the treasury to invest? Even if you say let Zambians invest, how did they expect the Zambian government to reinvest? To invest? That means that foreign earner was out. KCM was under liquidation and was literally being stripped off. There was no earning. FQM, you know, first quantum, you know, mine, was also on the way out because of the inconsistent policies in the mining sector. That is loss of foreign exchange. Whether you talk of Lumwana, I'm just looking at the big mines. All these were literally you know, not operating to capacity so that they can bring in the kwacha. You sell your copper, you, I mean, you bring in the dollar. And it is the more dollar you bring in, the, the more strong or the stronger the kwacha gets. So but granted, that was a problem. So, so, and this is the problem. So, so we granted. are working, um, um, uh, Costa, mm. to see, in fact, you can tell, that right now we are working Mopani, is mm. getting research. So, so we'll be coming to the mining sector, but uh, again, to because quote... we are related. It's yes. difficult. No, I, I agree. I, 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 agree. <laughs> I just want to okay. counter, re react as, as you are responding yes. on, on the kwacha. Okay. Um, you said at the beginning that to every effect there is a cause. Indeed. So I agree with you. And you were trying to explain the cause of why we're we not are, selling we are, anything we as a country. And you described the situation you found as a free-falling kwacha. Indeed. How then would you describe what is currently happening because you inherited problems that you knew of when you were in the opposition exactly. and promised solutions this is to what these problems. Exactly. So, but, but, but would we describe that, that from 2021 August, the, the exchange rate falls to 16 kwacha, mm -hmm. and now it's just fluctuating crazily around 25 that to 28. That is not even crazy. You have to do comparison mm. as to what is happening in the global economy. You also must do that. That's not comfort to the Zambians, but that's the reality. That's reality. So what you should ask me is, what are we doing to try and improve on this instability of the kwacha, the, the, the exchange rate? I think this is where you should ask me. That's why I thought I could 
comprehensively give you the picture that we are working hard. Uh, hence my question to, is, if you describe what you found as free falling, yes. how would you describe what is currently obtaining uh -huh. as stable? Oh, it is, you have to see how low did we fall. You know, colleagues, it's important that uh, even when we are reasoning out among ourselves, we say, where would we be? Because it's important. Where would we be? That's a very important question. And if we would have been there, why are we here? If we would have been better, then you should ask me that, what have you done? But we would have been worse. But we brought it down, and then it starts falling. You know, the, the, the words down and up can be confusing, but I hope you do understand. We brought the kwacha. We strengthened the kwacha. So the rising, actually, they will tell you it dropped 30, it has risen 31. Since we came in, it is because we were able to hold it. How were we able to hold it? The goodwill helped us. How were we able to hold it? That goodwill has helped us bring in a dollar, even from, you know, from IMF, you know that World Bank. All these are things we have done. If we didn't bring in this, goodwill and the negotiations going on which you probably would want to talk about the, the the restructuring where would we be if nothing was coming in do you think we would have but, but, been but, where but, we but are even, even with these interventions so we, of what you're these doing these interventions are helping but, but, but this is enough. not the rate but this is not the rate that no, certainly you promised and, and is good enough not at all but remember also it, this is not the rate we would want things mm -hmm. to let me, let me, that let me, is a let me give you a small personal practical example yes. madam vice president yes. Yes. in november last year mm. the station of diamond tv acquired football rights to show the africa cup yes. in thousands of us dollars yes. we were negotiating at almost 25.4 per dollar mm -hmm. by the time the competition was finishing mm -hmm. in on on february 11 mm -hmm. we had hit a loss of almost 300,000 quacha exactly. due to this instability so what do you tell a young sme like me to gain hope that really you are planning and doing things in my favor when I'm bleeding 300,000 Zambian kwacha. Exactly. The issue is you must have confidence. Look at the positive as you look at the negative. The free fall. I, I think it's you who said we went up to 27. We are here. I cannot post about that. It's also still part of the fluctuation. Some people are saying, how did it drop? Mm -hmm. Some of these are things that will begin to show because of what probably you would talk about. We, we, when you bring the dollar issue and the kwacha, we must then quickly go to the issues that will help us stabilize the kwacha. And these are the things that you probably say, let's talk later. But I'll tell you that we have to end the dollar for you not to have the the quarter just falling. We have to mm. earn the mm. dollar. It, it will not do, you know, for us to just talk and say the dollar. We have to earn it. How are we going to earn it? Mm. The plans are there. And there is, you know, it's good that you people talk of roadmap. Roadmap is not a point. It's a, a road map. It's a long distance. And when you are descent so low, then it means this roadmap must be really taken. Our plans are working and they will work. I can tell you with confidence that the plans that your government has will soon start yielding, you know, fruit. It will start yielding, my dear. You are aware that Mopani is bringing in dollar. The, que that, the, that the, question is, question. the question is the question is when but but just the to, question is when it's already coming just, just, in just, you just are just aware to, that we have already received just, just to follow your lead <laughs> in terms of <laughs> you, you want us to go into the interventions but uh, for the sake of the viewers uh, forgive us on the hiss in the background sound we are broadcasting live from government house and uh, rains uh, are heavy uh, outside for that. right now uh, obviously good for for farmers so please forgive us on that um, uh, background sound coming through from the range but but back to this um, the depreciating kwacha well has necessitated an increase in mm -hmm. terms of intervention measures the central bank last week mm -hmm. held their quarterly briefing right. uh, one of the things dr Denny Kalialia said was that our economy 
is in a critical condition uh, and we must do something for it not to get into runaway or hyperinflation and mm -hmm. this is a patient that needs surgery. So mm -hmm. among the things that have ha happened obviously is one, the increase in the starter reserve ratio. Mm -hmm. Again, the monetary policy rate was increased mm -hmm. the highest in three years, increasing the cost of borrowing, mm -hmm. thereby limiting access to financing. Now the question is then, Madam Vice President, mm. does government recognize that these measures mean that the lives of ordinary citizens are about to even get tougher? It's, it's time to brace for impact and tighten mo the belts tighter. I think you are going to the business entity and I agree with you. And for me, uh, without being, uh, having all this economics understanding, is that these are stopgap measures. We cannot fully depend on this how long it is not sustainable, but it is important. Mm -hmm. In any crisis, you invoke every other thing that can help you. Hold on, but it's a hold on. It's not a permanent solution for me. That's the way I understand this. It is to hold, you know, the free fall, but there must be a sustainable way that will make, that will stop this free fall of the kwacha. That is important. It was important for the central bank to do that so that we don't continue rising because sometimes you go too far even when permanent measures are brought it becomes difficult because it, the, the road becomes longer so what they did i commend them but uh, generally in our plan those are managing our economy but we have to plan our economy in our planning we must have a sustainable way to ensure that we can bring in the dollar rather than go to the you know uh, uh, to the central bank to start working their monetary policies and uh, also to hold the, 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 the dollar from the reserves or anything like that. We are working on ensuring that we can truly have, we can truly have a sustainable mm. economy by looking at what the economists will call macroeconomics. You know, that's what you call. How do we look at the big issues? How do we, for example, tackle the real inflation? How do we tackle the real fall? Not this. This is mm. just holding so, it. So, so, so we're we just holding it. Granted, yes. you agree, and these are stopgap measures yes. that are not in the long term. Yes. No. So how then are you as a government looking at timelines in terms of when you're, you're telling us, let's hold on. Let's be hopeful. Indeed. But these are harsh economic times. Exactly. Uh, and the only way out, like you've said, is increased productivity, not only in the mines, but for private sector. That's the only real jobs that will create liquidity uh, in the economy and will create jobs. But how do we expect to do this when some of these short-term measures are hurting the private it, sector? It is a combination. You know, it's a bitter pill. Sometimes you need to swallow a bitter pill in, in, in order to get better. These, like I've said, are stopgap measures. They have to help us get to the meaningful sustainability that we will provide. And even now, the job creation that you are talking about is still happening, yes, under very difficult circumstances. We are not saying the circumstances are not difficult, but the manufacturing part is going on, the mining part is going on. We thought agriculture would be a booster to our economy, uh, well, I, I, I heard some kind of rains coming, and the one would say, oh, praise the living God. But you have seen the policies in agriculture. How, in our belief, humanly, that this was going to be another, you know, way. Other than the manufacturing, things that we promised in, our, in opposition, manufacturing, as job creation, value addition, as a way also of being... a. Uh, 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 a dollar in if you want. We also said in agriculture we will do that. We also said in mining we will create jobs. And these things are on our books and they are going on. But the situation is still rough. Mm. But the people must hold on. So how, how, how long should we be holding on, Madam Vice President? I will tell in, you. In, in the methodical <laughs> approach of the UPND, yeah. in the hopeful clarion call of, of you and the President because again, for us small businesses, mm. we call ourselves hand to mouth. These stopgap measures mean that if I have a loan, a few things will happen. Number one, banks have already started communicating that effective March, 
lending rates are going higher. You know when you were coming into power that this was one of the concerns, that the cost of capital, the cost of borrowing was too high. Private sector was crowded out. The commercial banks were going towards treasury bills and bonds. This means that borrowing becomes more expensive. If you have a loan, you're a teacher, you're a nurse, uh, with a loan, you've bought a car, you've bought a small plot, it means your, your months to service this loan will have to be extended. And this is exactly cost that those are the issues that we want to resolve. We promise to resolve and we will resolve. Please, Zambians, do not judge us on two and a half years. The manifesto that we gave was five years. I think it is important that to undo, this is why you say in Parliament, I say what? Th there was a lot of, I don't want to use wrong words. <laughs> I don't want to say rot, but the economy was dead. And we are struggling to bring it out, up. And there is no way you avoid certain things. We could have avoided, but the international also, the global economy, which you are better placed to know than I am, the global economy also works out. Basically, every promise is done in uh, an environment. When you promised your wife, you would, or is it girlfriend, that you will look after her, you will buy her a car, it's because you are in a certain position. When that position changes after the wedding, if you lose your job, your wife will not leave you because you are not going to buy the car that you promised. You have to look at the environment. We came in, there were things we are aware of, for example, the date, we came very geared to come and restructure, which we are doing, whether we like it or not. The high indebtedness that we found is a hindrance. One of the results you are talking about is this high cost of living, because we don't have the resources. Remember, if I remember figures well from that time, when we reached a point, please, Zambians, we reached a point where the Zambian revenue was to go to debt servicing. 70% was to go to, to debt servicing. And 40% or more was going to go to salaries. Has that That's changed? Exactly. You know, today we are doing things. Mm -hmm. Please, Zambians, listen through this young man, Costa. You know, when we came in, wh what is it that is not happening? In fact, you have to say the cost of living is related to the two which are also intertwined. That's what I said in the beginning. It is the cost of oil, which we have no control over. The cost of oil at the international market. So when we were talking, making some promises, they were within a given you know, environment. We are not responsible for the global you know, situation, the wars and things that are happening that have pushed the cost of oil. And because we were not aiming, we still haven't reached the point where we are aiming the dollar, then we also don't have much control on the dollar. So the combination has brought this, particularly mm. the goods that we, mm. we import, becoming extremely expensive. And the goods that are made out of, you know, like oil, because oil is, the, is what oils the economy. So we see so many things also getting a little too, if you may, too expensive. Yeah. If you may allow me just to, to, to ride on that, since mm. you've touched on debt restructuring and, mm. and, and then oil, um, the cost of fuel in Zambia uh, obviously, again, you'll agree with me that uh, it's quite high yes. now at 34 kwacha, yeah. you know, 90, 19 ingwe. Mm. Since February of 2022, the mm. cost has mm. increased by 40%. And you've mm. given the reasons mm. why. This results in a high cost, definitely, of doing business, translates into a high cost of living. Mm. Connected to the debt restructuring, mm. there is a feeling mm. that on one end, yes. that this it's new done administration... Mm is not pro-poor, oh. or is not, I, I'm saying there is a feeling, that, that's <laughs> yeah, what I'm asking you the like question, that, yes. is not pro-poor, uh -huh. or is not citizen-sensitive. Oh. Is there a bottleneck, 
or a stumbling block within the debt restructuring negotiating process where you as government are being forced or arm twisted to remove subsidies on the fuel pricing, no. to remove subsidies in agriculture, no. and really to do things that citizens feel in their eyes are hurting them just for you to get your way around the IMF and the debt restructuring. No. And on this one, I want to be very specific. There's been a debate on subsidies, and this has been asked to you in Parliament. Mm. Why can't we sustain subsidies on fuel? Madam Vice President. I, li I like the question because you have said, why can't we sustain? That's the word you used, whether it came by <laughs> involuntarily, because that's the word. Can we sustain? Is it sustainable today to continue fuel subsidy? Is that the proper thinking? If we sustained, if we kept on with subsidizing the fuel. Surely, is that the number one priority at the expense of drugs in the hospital? Is that what we are saying? And do you know that we have a huge mountain already that government is grappling with, particularly in fuel? A, a big debt that was not paid. It was just, you know. You inherited it, over $400 million worth of fuel you debt. <laughs> so you know. Yes, we no, know. No, so, no, and, and, we, and you knew, and we, you promised that you come and, and sort out these problems. We are sorting out. Mm. And we are sorting out. Sorting out is not to increase the mountain of debt. Mm. Sorting out is to find alternatives. And one alternative is to say fuel, and I don't want to, to say too many things, but fuel, yes, is important. But being pro poor means we also go to the person right the poorest of them all, who needs to survive on that drug, who needs to go to school. That you, you, when some of the things you read there, I was wondering, those, when were they spoken? Maybe they were spoken among other, you know, uh, earlier when you talked of us accusing you to, to sabotage, I don't know who said that. Accusing the, the regime. Accusing, mm. <laughs> yeah. When you talk of the, the, the schools, for example, uh, universities, I think there was one who said they could not afford. You know that we are giving these children meal allowances? Are you aware that everybody gets meal allowance starting this year? Are you aware? So we would rather empower those poor people as we continue to find the means of bringing in cheaper fuel. That includes the Tazama program. That Tazama program has a lot of implication. Sooner than later, we may reach the 100%, and we should see a deduction because this route takes away the transportation, reduces the transportation cost. You may not have seen them because when something is bad, to see the good things, it will take time for mm. people to experience. Go, go, you are aware go. that in the fuel issue, we are also doing the blending project. All these are means to try and bring the down the cost. But the key is the dollar. Mm. We but, must but Madam Vice President, government is all about continuity. Yes. And I want to take advantage of the fact that uh, before you serving as Vice President now, you served in government before yeah. under the movement for multi-party democracy. There were plans uh, no. in that era. You remember very well um, strategic energy reserves. I mm -hmm. think there were, there were storage tanks being put in place uh, within provinces. More recently, I think in a month or so when the price didn't move at around 33, 34 kwacha, mm. the ARB told us that they were using what they were calling a strategic fund mm -hmm. to sort of hedge just the, to keep it. To just keep, just it, to there. keep it. But but again, whether it's an issue of terminology, they refused that it was not a subsidy and so on. Mm -hmm. So the argument for some has been that as a, as a sovereign state, uh, even those big Paris Club nations that we're dealing with, uh, who are who may be telling us that you cannot hold subsidies. Do subsidize when situations hit, hit yeah. certain matters. So what I'm trying to ask is, do we have strategic reserves as a country? What has happened? What is happening at Indeni? What, what is happening with our reserve? Do I, we really have a reserve? Yeah, I think those are things to look at that can be discussed, probably better. We need uh, strategic reserves that are here. But it all comes from the indebtedness that we have. How do we handle this? in which, which, which resource 
the little resource that was there, you have heard that they said they already used it to hold the, the, the fuel. But when you continuously say IMF is telling us, mm. that's why my president says, please let us not blame IMF. IMF is not the one telling us. We have to look at our own economy. That's why I said, is it sustainable? Are we going to continue to subsidize fuel? When we already have a debt, you are the one who said 400 million US dollars. Do we continue to add? Where is this resource supposed to come from that we are going to pay this? So it, the issue of subsidy is not an imposition on the state, on us. It's an it internal choice. It is for us to be able to clean up. Because for us to grow, Costa, we have to, 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 to clean up the mess. We have to clean up the debt. We have to start living for, for, for today. We have to start. And how do we start? I said the bitter pill may have to be swallowed. But you also asked the question earlier, how long? I think that is a very fair question. How long can people hold on? Won't we swallow the pill too bitter that it, at the end it becomes poisonous? No, no, no. There's no poisonous <laughs> pill. <laughs> that is a saying. You don't have to have a poisonous. It's bitter, but it is medicine. Yeah. When they say bitter pill, it means it will cure you. And we have, for example, the things that we are doing should immediately start helping us to bring back the quacha into some normalcy, including the restructuring. I think when the biggest challenge, Madam yes, Vice President, yes. on fuel yes. for the Zambians yes. has been the, the monthly review. I'm sure you get this in Parliament. I'm sure you get this at, at church everywhere. And, 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 and everywhere. Mm. Um, when President Hitchilema was appointing the new PS, PS Peter Mumba, mm. his instructions were very clear that you need to review this pricing. And interestingly, we saw that just after the PS went into office, that's the month that things you know, w were held. So again, why is it taking so long for government to reverse whether this is an error in judgment, to go back to the three months uh, uh, planning cycle? Um, because honestly, uh, even if you say free education, and then a child has to jump on a bus today, it's 10 kwacha, tomorrow it's 15 kwacha. It, it sort of draws back from some of the gains you're having. So the, the, the inconsistencies, it's bad for planning, this monthly review. I'm sure the people that worked on that as government, there was a, a, a reason. The reason that personally I saw in this, the, the, the good reason that I saw, is the issue that you, you want to keep a price. For example, if we, keep, we kept the price at 20 because the dollar was 20, and now you have been talking of the dollar changing, then it comes to 27. How do you handle the difference? How do you handle the difference? It is easy to plan like that if you are subsidizing because you are not counting what the state will pay. But it is reality. The good part also is that this, we saw, yes, we haven't seen much of the drop in the fuel price in this one month, month uh, thing. But I think we saw it one time, a little drop. That is just an indication that that little drop was probably when the quarter did it better. So what we need is the quarter to do better. That is what will give us consistency. Because if, if you are going to say no, every time, you know, three months we plan, and the quarter, the dollar becomes something else. There is always that difference. But if the price at the international, you know, market, they, if the price of oil or fuel goes down, there should be a benefit to the Zambians. It is just because we have not seen much of the quacha being strong. When it is strong, I think people can appreciate this uh, monthly because they will also gain. If the, the quacha is able to buy more, basically the dollar is cheaper, they buy more fuel, they will be able to sell it at uh, normal and make a little more. The pump price will also be affected. It will go down. Mm -hmm. So basically it is being determined by the international market. When you put it at three, 
because it doesn't mean that if you, you say now every month, you have to increase every month, even if the international market is not increased. I don't think that's what it means. So, so it means we, that you are responding to, to the, the international market forces. Market so, forces. So, so, yes. so what is government through regulators and government through policy saying to citizens, saying to businesses, insofar as planning for the cost of doing business? How then should we plan? Let us work. Let us use. Let us stabilize the economy itself, basically, by ensuring that we can earn the dollar. We can earn the dollar. You, 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 you are <laughs> quick to stop me from saying, for me, it is where do we get the dollar from? It is important because the dollar will not come by abracadabra or by our arguing here or by being political here. It will not come. It will come because of the good policies that this government is putting in place. The good policies that is in, you know, attracting investment into the country. Investment that will grow the local economy through manufacturing. The good policies that will make the mining industry grow and once again bring the much needed forex, which makes the dollar, you know, or our kwacha stronger. This is what the government has put in place. Today, you talk of my president all over. He has gone to negotiate, and you have seen the goodwill. So much commitment from people that want to invest here. This is the hope that I can give to the Zambians, that there are many investors that want to come and invest in our country. And as they invest, what will come is they will bring the dollar. And when the dollar comes, which shouldn't be... You know, we can work hard together. And, uh, you know, I hate to give timelines because our plan, for example, if I tell you about Mopani, Mopani has already brought in some money, some dollar. And we hope that, uh, you know, come 28th of this month, they'll bring in a little more. And then by the end of the year, we expect that they are bringing a 1.5 or somewhere there billion dollar. What is the implication of that? The implication of that is that we will have the dollar and then our kwacha will be stronger. Mm. That is what no, it no, means. No, no. We also have investment that is coming through Lumwana, my dear. Mm. When that comes also, they have committed $2 billion. The project has mm. begun. So we are expecting this filtering in of money. We cannot change. We cannot make the kwacha stronger without having what to sell in order to bring agreed the agreed madam vice president that uh, we are not producing enough. exports yes. to balance our payments mm. or the balance of payments mm. as that's they, what you uh, call uh, it as yes. they call it yes uh, i was on the copper belt just last week yes. and one of the street terminologies being used for the mm -hmm. UPND leadership is uh -huh. they call you wash promise when i promise <laughs> because uh -huh. because mm -hmm. Some of these things you talk about, 1.2 billion, 1.5 billion, mm -hmm. sound very sweet and nice. Yes. But these are pledged. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, if you allow me to finish my question. Uh, uh, okay. These are pledged investments. Mm -hmm. uh, and like you're saying, yes. it, it, let me give a case of KCM, for example. Yes. We, we still have not had a deal locked in with Vedanta because just last week we saw that the provisional liquidator has put in the high court that she's calling for a scheme of arrangements to be negotiated, especially insofar as payments with creditors and suppliers. 1.2 billion pledged investment, but the mine is indebted in excess of 4 billion. Yeah. You, you speak of Mopani, yes, there was 80 million promised. We know that $30 million has been paid. No, no. <laughs> you mean paid out? What are you saying? I was there so mm. far from the 80, 30 has begun being paid to critical suppliers, and, and that money will be coming in. So again, in no, the it's already in the 80. Go well, on, go on, go well, on. Well, 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 <laughs> That's what you got. So, so whether 80 uh -huh. million dollars yeah. uh, is in. Paying the people that we are owed by Mopani. That yes. is the purpose. And that is so, also you should appreciate. So, so, so part of my job is to interview people and give mm. you feedback. Yes. And I'm telling you that... Uh, from what I gathered on the ground, mm -hmm. uh, obviously suppliers and contractors are being paid in bits and pieces with critical suppliers first. Mm -hmm. And then the Arab uh, investors are saying, we want the mines to kick in very quickly to start getting a return on the investment. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 
My issue then is, how do we balance, for example, the KCM issue of indebtedness versus these pledged investments? Because it's not that the 1.5 or 1.2 billion is already in. No, I didn't say that. I actually mentioned the same figure, the eight, and I expect, not I, we expect that um, around the end of February we'll get, they'll, they'll pump in another 150. That is for Mopani. Mm. That is the expectation. Mm. In Vedanta, yes. And, the, and the, you know, again, we are doing the very best that colleagues that you should have held accountable. They have escaped the hook. They are the ones who did what they did. They liquidated. They liquidated the company. It's not productive. But we want to bring it back to productivity, to production, and hopefully productivity. But you did refer to the 25. They have also started to bring in that little 25 to pay the current, because the waste is to make the mines, you know, the mines uh, 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 get uh, flooded. So basically, the, this, the 25, which should help the current payment so that the works continue, the salaries and so on, to those that are still operating, as they bring in all those things you are talking about, you know, to pay the old, you know, uh, people whom they owe. So those are also positives that you should look at, that the mine will continue. And it is our hope that this does not take again another one year. The, 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 the thing, the, the new contract it has good things in there. If they fail, there is something that eh, the state or government can do. So are Rather we, than are, are grabbing we, what you saw. Are we, are we guaranteed these investments or they are merely yes. pledges? No, no. These are That's not what pledges. I'm you. I could have <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is the issue. They are commitments mm. and also they are actualizations. The issue, for example, of Mupani is no longer a commitment because the commitment is when people say we will come but the things are there they are already on site who brings the 80 million if you are not going to start and 150 within this month hopefully it will also come those things are already agreed on mm -hmm. who talks whether we, we like it or not it's not a commitment that today first quantum which was going down like i said is now you know, didn't just commit, but they have brought in, remember the nickel uh, mine? That is not a commitment. It is here. But because we had gone so far, I was saying to somebody that, you know, when it rains in Mwinilunga, you know, Mwinilunga at, at the, 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 the source of Zambezi, it, it is actually raining better in Northwestern. But uh, to reach Kariba, it takes time. So basically, we had gone so far, we had sunk so low. These mines had stopped. They were going to all go like Glencoe. So now they are producing. To reach the level where we have this feeling is where, you know, not the feeling you talked about, when I, where it starts affecting people positively, that's where the patience is being called mm. for. Because we had really, really, really gone far. But these have started. It's not just, I'm not talking about commitments. In fact, you remember commitments even before President came in. There was a commitment of 25 million investment, a uh, million billion. But that's not what we are talking about. I'm talking about investment, you know, coming directly. When you say nickel, it is there. 100 million. The reinvestment, which had stopped in, in the FQM. They came back and the reinvestment is there, 1.2 billion. It's not a commitment. It's actualized. Whether you say Lumwana, there is a project which has started, which is a reinvestment. They had stopped all these plans at 2 billion US dollars. That is money in the country. Mopani, we, we have talked about that. That is not a commitment. That is actualized. When you say KCM, yes, we are still working. But for them to even bring that 25, it shows beyond commitment. You don't throw in money where you don't think you will come. Remember the cobalt but, but mine. Just, but, but, just to get you, but just to get you correctly, when you mention those figures to yes. say actualize, do we have the 1.2 and the 1.5 billion? Yeah. The, the issue when you or say... Or the investment has started flowing the in. The investment has started. Like I'm saying, I, I used, for example, I can use Lumwana. The, the project the, has begun. Barrick. That means, yes, gold, barrick gold. 
that means that the investment has begun. This is where I'm saying it is a trickle effect. It's not like in poo and then spread in, in shop right and in, in your diamond. It means it has started. That's why I've said mm. it takes time for the effect to start taking hold and the ordinary Zambian feels it. Mm. But all these also mean jobs, my dear. Allow me to quickly uh, 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 bring in callers who are very eager to interact with you mm. this evening, Madam Vice President. Mm. Emmanuel Call it from all the way from Kalumbila. Good evening, uh, Emmanuel. How are you doing this evening? Uh, 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 fine, thank you. How are you, sir? Very well, thanks. Uh, under 60 seconds, what is your question for Her Honor the Vice President? Okay. Um, I, it's actually not a question, but the, a contribution. Go ahead, very quickly. Okay, yes. Uh, good evening, uh, Honor the Vice President. Good evening, Mr. Nkole. Yes, I'm Emmanuel Nkole from uh, Northwestern Province, and uh, my contribution uh, this afternoon is to actually agree with you, your Honor the Vice President, that uh, uh, we don't government so far so good. We really appreciate uh, for the peace and unity that uh, we are actually uh, we are actually enjoying at the moment, mm. and also and also we we actually uh, appreciate for other measures that you are putting in. So I would I want to to to, to actually rehearse with my brother Costa to tell him to say some things. He is he, he, my brother. You are a, a journalist. And you should understand that the, some things are actually global at the moment. If you, if you are from, uh, like, for example, uh, America, uh, the, 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 the United States of America, something that is at 10 US dollars, it is being bought at 18 US dollars. You go to England, something, if you, if you go to 50 pounds in a shop, when you are buying three items, you find that you are only buying two or maybe one. So we should appreciate some sometimes on what the government is, is doing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mm. Nkole. Well, my job this evening is to ask the questions on behalf of uh, the, the citizens. I'm not the one answering the questions. So clearly, uh, th that's a comment and contribution. You can keep your questions and contributions coming through the phone line uh, on the screen as well as uh, the online and social media pages that uh, are displaying uh, on, on, on the screen. So um, I think kudos yeah. for you on that. Uh, Thank you very much. Um, mm. uh, Imano and Kole, I appreciate it because indeed we have to always compare globally mm. what is happening. We, you know, the issue of the cost of living, for example, I think that's what he's talking about. Other than enjoying the peace, please appreciate the peace. Do you, you may not even be aware that last Thursday we were voting in Mwansa Bombwe. Did you hear of Upangas there? We are very well aware. Uh, then you uh. have to bring the good also out. And the, that's what he has talked about, basically, that there is peace in the, in the country. We should appreciate because it is in the face of peace. Peace is the greatest ingredient. I think I spread it mm. on your forum. Uh. Let me just say yes. Thank you, Emmanuel, for bringing in the mm. global issue. Because if I bring in, since, you say it's since, global. Since you've taken notes, allow me to bring in Ngosa, then you, you can mm -hmm. couple them. Mm -hmm. Ngosa Piri from within Lusaka, good evening. Good evening, Costa. Good evening, Madam President, Vice President. Good evening. How are you? Uh, go ahead Good with day. your question this evening. All right. My question, um, I think I heard the, the, the Vice President say when they were outside, there's certain things that they knew and certain things that they didn't know. Now, Madam Vice President, I want to find out from you. Do you think your government overpromised the Zambians? Thank you so much, Mr. Piri. Uh, keep those calls coming through and uh, the questions to the Vice you know, President. Um, I think the, the, the question there, you, you wanted to touch on the global comparisons, yes. and his question is very clear. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I think that's, that's what he has done, and I totally appreciate I didn't want to be the one to say global, because the cost of living is whichever media you face today. Today I was on several media, you know, on TV, 
And I could see that this is challenging everywhere, compounded with the wars, compounded with climate change, things that some people in your you know, initial statements of how people have looked at the economy were dispelling like climate change is an excuse. It's not, it's real. So we are not the only ones. We thank God it that- It was the UPND that was telling the PF to say they should not use COVID-19 oh. and climate change okay. as an excuse. Are you sure? Uh, when I, was it to say? I, I actually, I, but that I, is... I, I personally interviewed President Hichilema mm -hmm. and yourself yes. Yes. prior to the election, uh -huh. and you said it was poor leadership yes. and poor planning. Exactly. That is why today we accept this. When we were talking then, this environment was not as bad as it is. But that is not the issue. We are keeping here, we have to use every means that is here to ensure that the cost is not beyond reach. Some people are literally starving. I am not talking to you Zambians that you are not uh, facing you know, difficult times, but you look at what are the good things. For example, Milimi, which is a big issue in our country, it, it, it was a decision which was uh, very difficult. Either you give the farmer for the farmer to continue to produce, or you give the consumer. But don't you think the yeah. example you give of Milimo, Madam Vice President, mm -hmm. is indeed a big issue? And, the jump, big and issue. the jump from 123 kwacha per 25 kg. Yeah, well, you know what we three, should be looking at? Don't, this cost uh, is yes, yes, but, but, but not when, affordable even, to even, many people. But even when Manu Ankole talks about a global comparison, yes. um, I think let's look at the, the, the inflationary pressures mm -hmm. and, 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 and exactly. what, what may be six dollars in the USA with their capacity to buy <laughs> is a bit different. If you're telling, if you're telling, no, you better, you better go where he, he, no, no, he talked about, you'll be surprised no, that their buying power is totally neutralized. No, but, 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 Madam Vice President, but this is not but, for but, me but, to but, say but, but, because but, those but, are but, friends. Uh-huh. From 120 to 350, surely can That we... is where you are wrong. When you go to Mwense, mm -hmm. there are very few people <laughs> that are crying over this. That's where you are wrong. The people so, in Kaputa are not crying over the price of... That's why we're being told we should stop eating in Shima so much and begin to diversify. No, no, no. Uh, it, that, that is not the reason. We've heard the, some the, of the, the ministers that, say that. Who? We've heard some of your ministers say that. No, no. You know, for me, diversification is important, but it's not by decree. Mm -hmm. The change is happening. The change is happening in your home. I don't know how many times your children eat in Shima. It is, it's just a happening. The question is whether the, I can afford a bag of milk. No, no, no come on. Eh? Your children would rather you don't have milk because that's they that's want that. something else. Madam Vice that. President, don't use me as uh, no, because as, you are as the a, nearest. As a <laughs> of, of, I am telling of you. A bag of milk. Yeah, but the point you brought out is that people in Moense, and I liked the, mm. I liked the example. Mm. People. In, in Kaputa are not the ones that are crying because they are the ones that produce maize. They are the ones who are happy that government gave them a hundred quarter more on their bag of maize because they are the ones who struggle the whole year. Yes, we will also continue to see. What is important here, I'm sorry to say this to many people, but what we need, yes, the inflation must be controlled. That is the issue. The issue is that the salaries of people that is another angle. Otherwise, you don't want a farmer to continuously work and get nothing. And this is what I was telling yeah. you, Madam Vice but President. But then we move even, to if Mbos, Mbos, even if he says the dollar in, in the U.S., it's the capacity to buy. If yes. people don't have but, enough disposable but, income, it but, means nothing. But, you know, when he made this comparison, what he meant is even the capacity to buy in the dollar itself, in the dollar run, the dollar land, dollar land, <laughs> in the dollar land is not the same. This is how bad it is. Because you can think of a gallon, you know, they buy in gallons. The gallon also shorter in fuel. You have to, you, you are the journalist. The next time yes, we meet, be, be, because you of find the out prices, from but, there. But I'm sure yeah. so, they'll, they'll so put if mitigation the, if measures. The people, no, there's nothing mitigation. They are also going through a stress. They, they, they are also they, they going through a stress. They put mitigation measures when the Biden administration said they'll start buying a million 
barrels of oil uh, in, in every month that we're putting in mitigation measures well, because well, they had the capacity. Haven't we put in, and you are giving the answers. Are you the one who should be answering? You are saying they had the capacity. So mm. where is your capacity? That's the question I want do to you know. Have you have? The, mm. This is why we are saying let's ma make the money. Let's, our, our programs are to create the capacity. Create the capacity which was totally eroded. There was no capacity, no nothing in your treasury. Come on, you should say, but how are we doing these things? There was no capacity, colleagues. Two years, and our time is five years. Judges, but at the end of five years, I can assure you, that indeed we will have overcome mm. some of these challenges. Before you answer the second but question, there's a Mr. Charles Mitchell on the line from Kawa is being okay. assistant. Mr. Mitchell, good evening. Good evening, Costa. How are you? Fine, thank you. How's Kawa this evening? Yeah, good evening, uh, Honor, the Vice President and the Acting President. Good, uh, good evening, Mr. Michello. Thank you. Actually, mine is a contribution and a question at the same time. Uh, yeah, Honor, the Vice President, which I could have upon before I spoke with the the way you are coming out and articulating issues to make us, the Zambians, understand. First and foremost, I would like to appreciate your government and our government for the peace that we are enjoying, that we never enjoyed during the term of the PF in government. I remember very well that where you are there being interviewed by Costa, that time you wouldn't have even been there for more than five minutes we would have interrupted the program. But thanks to the government of Ada in the Ishlema, and you who are honored the vice president for the peace that we are enjoying. My question is, I think if I remember very well, late last year, you commissioned as a government the uh, Indeni pipeline. So I don't know how far the government have gone with the indemnity refinery That's in enough. order to reduce the cost of fuel in our country so that it can also cushion the cost of living into our country, especially in transportation. I thank you so much, Honor. Thank you, Mr. Charles Michello. Uh, we will be taking the loose, uh, you know, the last two, uh, you know, call contributions, and then taking to, you know, online. Uh, I'll give you time to respond to okay. to to, the, to these two. There was Mr. Angosa, yes, uh, who actually said, "I said that uh, we knew th some things and we didn't know others." I, I don't think I really said that. I think I would be, you know, wrong to say we didn't know certain things that were happening. We knew. Maybe the extent of destruction mm. of the economy. I think his, his final question there was, based on these two scenarios, did you overpromise the people of Zambia? Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Th did we overpromise? And he, he went on to say, I said we knew we didn't. No, we didn't overpromise the Zambians. That is reality. We didn't overpromise the Zambians. If you look at our promises, actually you'll see that we have done so much. The cost of living has too many components. But if you look at the promises, in fact, Costa, I have this. As, as, uh, as apart from being a Christian and my Bible is my Bible, I also have our promises here in the manifesto. You need to look at the manifesto, um, uh, Mr. Ngosa. We didn't overpromise. You may talk about the cost of living, but we promised, in, you know, to, to develop the human resource. And how do you do that? We talked about education. Are we not performing in education? Can we honestly say, what have you done in education? We have brought in free education. Don't say it as little, because maybe you were able to pay for your children at school. But there are many people who have gone to school. And today, the agenda, the global agenda, part of the global agenda is human capital. And for us to develop properly in all these in those spheres of fields we are talking about, we need human capital. And this is why we have invested in human capital through education, from primary to secondary, and then we even are giving meal allowances. Of course, the, the issue of bursary and loans has been there, but we are working on increasing 
those things. That is something that we promised, uh, that is Mr. Ngosa. We also promised to uh, take development all over the country, equitable distribution. One way we have done this is the, through the CDF. Please, you should say, you guys, you said there was no money. But we, today we are able, for example, 2024, 20, 20, this year, they'll get over 30 million in each constituency. That is the equitable distribution, not when you start giving and it is given. There is something that I saw in one of uh, you know, the writings, the people concerned who said, can you give this CDF equitably and the, at the same time? That is exactly what it is. The money is there. What we need to build now is the capacity for people to use CDF because some of them still have 2022 money. Every, that money is reserved, reserved for each constituent. Mm. So I'm just mentioning some of the things that we, yes, please. we have done. Mm. This is a second thing we have done. Look, we, we talked of, we can talk about the retirees, for example. Mm. You know that but Madam Vice President... Yes, um, we didn't overpromise. Uh, that is uh, the issue. Just, what we promised, we are running just, through just, it. Just a rider uh, yes, on, yes. on his on mm, question. Mm. Um, Many feel, or some feel rather, that uh, when this question of not delivering on campaign promises is raised, you, you, you pick on only the few that you can point <laughs> at. Um, and, and I want to take advantage of having you here. Yeah. Were the other promises merely politicking or just no, political no. rhetoric? Is, uh, please, please yeah, allow, allow, allow me to finish. I can finish it there. So, so, so a campaign advert of an empty trolley under PF and a full trolley under UPND may not have been in the manifesto, but it was a promise and a message that attracted Zambians that will increase your buying power. A graph or a table showing that fuel is now 17 kwacha or 19 kwacha will bring it down once we remove the middlemen to 12 kwacha was a promise, or it was merely political no, no, no. So, so, so when people ask you for accountability on those promises... No. The, 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 the point that I would like to make is, I already mentioned that our promise is for five years. Mm. And there is no promise where you come and everything is done. Please, you have to count. For me, my own campaign, I said, you know, in, in my, uh, my own language, that when people promise you 10 things, for example, even after 10 years, whether you want to give them another opportunity, you have to count. You promised this, you did this, you did this, you did. That is after five years. So if after two years, we have done more than the 10 we promised, then you say you are failing. So, so I you're, mean, you're, more than, so you're more happy, than you're, the you're, you're happy that you're on the right track. I am very happy. The fact that mm. there is strife in terms of the cost of living, this is something that we must work on. But to, under difficult circumstances, we have done things. For example, by mopping up, stopping this corruption, bringing out money, we are able to have drugs we'll, we'll, we'll in come hospitals. To that. John Mwale is in Lundazo this evening. Good evening, Amwale. Good, good evening, thank you, Mr. Katari. How are you and how's Lundazi this evening? L Lundazi is okay. Good evening, Madam Vice President. Good evening, Mr. Mwale. Your question okay, for the Vice President. I've got two questions. The first one is um, on the weather forecast. Knowing that we have a rapid supply of rain in uh, this current season, mm. is there any plan that government is trying to put across in terms of the investment in irrigation? Let's say a deliberate loan policy to civil servants and other farmers when it comes to irrigation investment. Then number two, the, the, the deliberate policy that government can try to put in place to have them the overpricing of goods. Give an example, if the dollar goes high today, these commodities go high within a minute. But when dollar drops, they hesitate to reduce the prices. Give an example, if the dollar is at 25 quarter today, tomorrow it reduces to 19 quarter. The price of goods will maintain, but when it goes back to the previous price, the businessmen say that has been high, high again, then they increase the prices. Is there any data that the government can put across to get these prices? Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Mwale from Lundazi. That marks uh, our last contribution via okay. phone calls this evening. Uh, I think you, 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 you've gotten his questions very clearly. He talks about... Um, the drought? The, 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 the current drought spell mm -hmm. uh, and intervention measures, then the issue of uh, mm -hmm. price cushioning. But we, we still did not answer, uh, Ms. Amigelo, Okay. Uh, from from Kabo. I think let's begin there, Johan. Yes. Uh, basically, thank you, Mr. Michello, for also acknowledging the peace, the greatest ingredient for any development of any kind. And uh, this is a big win because now we can talk about things without fear or favor. That's why you are asking that there is this, there is this. Nobody should insult you for asking. And uh, this is what we need. Nobody should beat you for asking. That is how we gain from each one of us because being in the government, we don't have the entire reservoir of wisdom, knowledge. We need to have an interaction like this one. So we appreciate it. It's in the, the face of peace. Now he says, um, I think he was asking about uh, the refinery. How far have we gone with Indeni refinery? I think that is the blending of oils to also help to bring the cost down. I, I, I would just say we are on course because it is important. But we also need to know that some of the mixtures will come from uh, agriculture, for example, where we, we, we have to have, um, what, what do you call this type of oil? That biofuels. You can, the biofuels. So this is on the books. It is going on. And I, I hope that we can soon start seeing an outflow, because that is another way to try and reduce the cost of fuel. This is what we know about this. But I can't give him a the timeline. specific uh, time, because I haven't really been briefed as to whether we have even started any production at all. But this is why, you know, we had to redo the Indian, you know, profile change from what it was to being ready to do the blending. Before you answer, you know, uh, Mr. John Mwale's question, I'd just like to also, because I had this question uh, uh, already, your portfolio as Vice President directly oversees, uh, you know, the disaster management and mm -hmm. mitigation. Mm -hmm. um, you've had these spells in the last two years where half the country is divided into floods due to heavy mm -hmm. rains, mm -hmm. the other, you know, into, into drought. Mm. The, 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 the danger right now, when you look at the, the forecast, not only for Zambia, but for, for most parts of SADC, mm. and the president on Friday mm. at, uh, at the prayers and at the UPND secretariat mm. was talking about the fact on that Thursday. we've now become the food supplier for most parts of SADC. Mm -hmm. Are we in a looming food security you know, crisis? And as the head of the disaster unit, what is your anticipation or data telling you so far? And like Mr. Mwale's question, what are the mitigation measures from government? Indeed. Thank you so much. Yes, DMMU, and indeed it becomes when the drought is like this, where almost half the country has, uh, you know, undergone this drought, it becomes a serious matter because food security is national security, as you are aware. So it's no longer just in the office of the vice president. It, have, it is right through uh, the, the, the entire government. But I'm happy you have noted that the issue of drought and floods is what we have been experiencing, particularly since we came in. We have had certain areas with floods, certain areas with drought, and the certain even experienced both. The floods come, then the, the, the drought comes to finish off what was left. But the beauty is we have not had a crisis to a point where people are left to just, I don't want to use the word die. We have been there. We have supplied maize because where it was, we pulled together. But we didn't have the situation as it is this time. This time it's huge. But I am still very hopeful, Zambians. One, we still have the crop from last year. We have half the country that is, it is raining. And because of the call from the president for people to go into agriculture, because of the same issue, remember we were stressed because, you know, last season, including up to now, I, I'm sure you are aware of this smuggling and things like that, things that this government wants to do away with so that we can do proper trade 
rather than uh, smuggling, so that there is proper earning. Because smuggling doesn't, doesn't even, you know, show really what we get. So with this pressure, that's why the president had that call that let people cultivate, and they cultivated. That includes where the rains are. There are more fields where the rains are. So we are expecting that, and remember the policy now of government is that those who got FISIP have to sell to no, not to government. deviate, Not to deviate from Maybe the Maybe I finish yeah, also. This time, can I be the one to say, let me finish? You've brought up a very important point on the but, smuggling. Uh, <laughs> and I wanted if to I finish, you can put the important point. Because what you have raised is very important. You have said, do we have any plan? And I think that's what Zambians are concerned about. How are we going to feed our people? The Lord God will help us. Number one, we have to acknowledge his, his you know, supremacy, the supremacy of God over Zambia. But remember that because the president called on the farmers, particularly the, the, the commercial farmers also, to grow the early maize, which we expect to start harvesting uh, probably within March, that was basically meant for export. But we may just have to buy to cushion this crop failure. That is one way. And also to ensure that we have to ensure that our people have enough before we can think. Because that's what yeah. every parent so, thinks. So, so I'm quoting you correctly. You're using the, yes. the words very carefully. We may have to buy to cushion. Yes. May have to. Yes. Now, the, the challenge that, that seems to be causing a bit of apprehension and uncertainty on the market yes. in, in terms of this, this looming drought and food security. Just last week, your Minister of Agriculture quickly announced a ban on, on, on maize exports to begin exactly. to assess the situation. Exactly. This, this puts pressure again on people wanting to smuggle because there's high demand we know in the Congo. The question for me, Madam Vice President, why have we never ever gotten it right? We know for a very long time we call ourselves a potential breadbasket of the region. Mm -hmm. The president was saying this last week with you, mm -hmm. you know, on Thursday. We know that Congo wants our maize, mm -hmm. Kenya wants our maize, Zimbabwe wants our maize. But, but, but why haven't we gotten it right in terms of a quarter that we grow for exports and earn money away from, from copper? But also on a domestic level, is that if there's panic on the smuggling, the cost of, of the millimill becomes Hi, and Zambians already ask, why wonga wudula if we have a bumper harvest? Why wonga wudula tirima chinyanja? Why? That, that, that's, that's the issue. Mm. But also, simply, uh, that's why this, the issue you, 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 you brought to Mwense. So, Mwense is different mm. from Lusaka. Mm. Uh, Bwanji, you know, don't take me into Nyanja. <laughs> why, <laughs> why is the cost of millimil high? Yes, the panic buying, buying comes in. But the issue, I think, that you started with is, why haven't we gotten it right in terms of smuggling? This is what the president was dealing with. You have to deal with both countries. I'm using one country, for example. If they need it in, 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 in Congo, we have to agree that can we stop? Can we do it right? Can we export properly? Because if we do, then the people there will not be forced to come and buy from us at a smuggled level. This is what this government is doing. We already have done the quota system you are talking about because we believed humanly that there will be food because people grew, including myself, now I'm a small farmer, that people, a lot of people did one hectare, two hectares, whatever, and we thought there would be enough food and we already did agreements with colleagues like the Congo you are talking about so that we do proper export maybe that would cushion the smuggling. But smuggling also is a vice. It's, 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 a, it, it's not right. And the people that do wrong will always be wrong, and they will always be there. So we have done that. But to cry, why is the millimill expensive? I think the chain, the chain is right. One, we had to increase the selling price for the farmer because it's the one who has toiled over years. But you have talked of the fuel issues. The other issues also play a role. That is why when we say, please buy a bag of maize. You know, but in Zambia, when you say something that is reality, people think you are crazy. My president says, buy a tractor to train down a tractor town. I mean, you mean, you mean, you can't really reason what the person is saying. So when a person says, 
Hama yo, hama yo milime. You know what it is? Me, I eat hama me. That is, I, I mean, I, I eat hamad meal, not, not. Uh, from the chigayo. From the chigayo. Mm. Now, if you buy 50 kg at the cost that, for example, government had put it, I won't go there. That will give you 48 kg. Hamad, 48 kg of millimil, which will be cheaper than one bag of uh, whatever millimil you are talking about. Yeah. And those are some of the issues. But also, we have to have many people. This, this should be policy. I liked what Father, Father Lupupa said uh, during one of these gatherings in the showground. Like, let everybody dirt their hands. Mm. So, so this is a policy direction you, you're encouraging people yes. to plow and so on. Yes. But, but I think uh, I, I wanted to touch on smuggling very, mm -hmm. very quickly because it's, it's this panic. Mm. Uh, uh, now, the immediate danger yes. is the fact that, uh, yes, you're telling us to pray for rain, though others are mocking you that you laughed at them for praying, you're now doing the same thing. No, no, thing. no, no. no. <laughs> uh, yeah, your, your political opponents are saying, you, 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 you told them they were mad when they were calling for prayers for rain, you're doing the same. No, no, but, no, we but, but, said they were mad. But, but the issue is uh. this. Um, uh, allow me to quote a colleague uh, yes. today. I saw a very sad video. Yeah. A colleague, Isaac Maipopo, spent around 80,000 kwacha in investment on five you know, farms. Mm. His maze is completely gone. And he's written an article urging the government to say either is there a possibility of ZNS, the fire services, assisting in some sort of irrigation? Just like John Mwale was saying, mm. is there any intervention or mitigation measures to save some of the crop? If disaster strikes that the rain does not come, mm. uh, crops will be dead, mm. people will lose a livelihood, mm. animals and livestock mm. will die. What are the intervention measures? Indeed, um, irrigation was already on our books, but to say it can save the current crop, I'm not an expert, because uh, I'm seeing my own field. How quickly can I go and drill a borehole mm. and uh, start watering? Mm. That would take experts to say so. If there is such possibility, government would uh, willingly do that. But we are also aware that we have to go irrigation. Whether it is this season, that one should not wait. We have to support people to start irrigating the crop. We have to. But whether to irrigate this crop, which is already getting affected, I can't say that. But we have to produce something under irrigation to also cushion the amount of crop that we may have. I was referring to those that did water, that planted the early, early, early maturing Maze. and the others, the, the areas in the northern zone where it is doing well. Irrigation is one way that we should work on. Government is already thinking of that. How quickly we must move. And this is where we say colleagues in the civil, civil service must help us work quickly. But to help people like my popo, or indeed many other farmers, I can't say, because I've seen some of the crop like you, are, you have, where it is literally dry. Can you retrieve mm. that? Mm. But he also talked of overpricing. Yes, uh, he was asking, when, when, when the dollar goes high, yeah. because we need to uh, you know, align to global practices, yes. prices go high. Yeah. When it appreciates, yeah. the prices don't come down. Yeah. That is the normal. But also, even if they were to come down, it needs time. Because when you have uh, imported this pain, it is not going to sell today. And if the price, if the dollar goes down, it doesn't mean that I will recover with this pain. It will affect the next consignment. I think that's the way they work. I'm not a business person, but basically if you import something at a, a higher price and then you want to drop it, it will remain until the stock is over, then another stock that you go and buy at a cheaper, mm. then we will also go down. Mm. We, we, it will be very difficult to start price controls <laughs> to a point mm. because we are a liberalized economy unless things get out of hand. You saw under this liberalized economy how we have had to bring in ZNS to cushion on the cost of milling. Without yeah. telling the millers to stop milling, they also are free 
to sell. It's competitive. In conclusion, Madam Vice President, uh, we, 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 we have really exhausted time. Um, <laughs> not the issues. Not the issues. I, I, I hope I'll be given another chance uh -huh. to come and bite at more issues. We still have lots of interesting... Too many. Too many. Uh, too many. But finally, uh, I just want you to touch on this. Um, we are two and a half years into your you know, tenure as the New Dawn government. You're saying we need to judge you on the basis of your manifesto and five years. You're calling on patience, you're calling on hope, and that you're doing something. For you to get into government, it takes a political party, and, and, and politics are always at play. What is your reaction to what is happening within the political space right now? The opposition are amassing what they're calling a movement, uh, whether it's UCA that they are calling it, or basically saying the people are not happy with the UPND. They are calling you a one-term party, and, and, and they're saying they've, the country has never experienced this. Some calling for an early election, some calling for your resignation as, 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 as president and vice president. What, what is your message to the people out there? Are you, are you, have you feel you've performed? Should they be believing the opposition really that you are a one-term party that has failed to live to their aspirations or, or your message or reaction to the opposition? Yeah, this is uh, very, very important for you to say that, that, um, you know, we, we are a one-term. That, those are politics. You know, politic, politicians can be very funny. Because like yourself? No, I am a states person. <laughs> <laughs> The reality is politicians sometimes dream. Really, can people who are calling themselves UCA, who are basically PF, basically PF, if, uh, if, if you give me time to say go through their performance, including the dollar you have been talking about, what did they find and what did they leave? They found, themselves found a very strong economy and they ran it down the drain. And they want Zambia. What will Zambians be looking for from UCA? What will they be looking for from people that inherited an economy growing close to 7%? It's a percentage, eh? To bring it down to negative. Then today you wanted to talk and say they, they left it at almost negative 2. We were growing that time under MMD. Done. So what are they talking about? They found the mining, you know, the mining, mining industry almost thriving. They brought it down. What are they coming for? They found a peaceful environment. They themselves brought in, you have heard almost all the callers have spoken of peace. They robbed the Zambians of peace. Oka, do you think they are forgotten? Mwaichitari group, you are the same PF. The same PF who split, and now they even want to say their split is being caused by UPND. Come on, is that not their style? Pandas, America. Pandas, that's what they did. Even just at the coming in of President Lungu, it was Pandas. They know it. And today they want to come back and do Pandas to the Zambian people. I, do you have I the confidence of the citizens other than the opposition? Playing the, politics the, the, and talking the about opposition being will play politics. Do you have to the Zambia? I still think that they are far more intelligent than the UCA or whoever they are are saying. They think they are unable. The Zambians are able to decipher from all the lies. They are able to tell the truth. They, I mean, they are able to tell what truth is. They understand. They even understand the genesis of the situation we are going through. And therefore, I believe that the, Zambians, the Zambian people do understand what we are going through. And this is why we should be giving them the hope. The hope that I've tried this evening by saying the economy will pick. But you're because also the real issue, Madam Vice President. So, so why should the Zambians not is, judge you the same way when you say politicians are very because, funny people? Why not say because, we are very funny people? Oh, yes. You can, if you want, you can say that. But the reality is we should be able to tell mm. Zambians what has the UPND done since coming into office. Are you sure? 
Yes, the cost of living, we hear it, but there is a lot more things that this government has done. And the Zambians are counting, like we have said here. You can list them. You can list them. You can list them. And that's what they are, they are looking for. But can they trust the people who brought us where we are? That's uh -uh. up to them. Uh, I know it's up to you, Zambians, but I know you are far more intelligent than somebody who wants to mislead you there. Some Thank people you. even want chiefs to be ministers. Thank you so much, uh, Madam uh, Vice President. <laughs> Madam uh -huh. Vice President, thank you so thank much you. Thank for you. allowing us to talk to it you live tonight. Thank you. Thank you a so pleasure. much. The wraps up Costa this evening. Special thanks to her honor, the Vice President of the Republic of Zambia, Mrs. Uh, W.K. Mtalina Lumango for hosting us at Government House, our entire, you know, staff and uh, our entire live production team. This has been Costa Monsa. Thank you so much to all those of you that have called in to contribute via, you know, live phone-ins and indeed on social media. Good night and God bless the Republic. <laughs>